Hi, Pete from Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors. Uh, today I'm making a video for Matt's uh, Yaska Bushcraft channel. Uh, we've got the Schrade SCHF 42D and I'm going to use it in my backyard which is at the moment a riverside, somewhat riverside location. Still enough reeds, the river's probably about 60 metres that way. Um, but it's been wet through here, uh, it's been flooded through here in the last three months. Uh, so yeah, it's not your typical Australian hard, you know, hard use outback, dry, arid nastiness. It's pretty nice to be honest, but it's cold. It's winter here, it's about 11 degrees Celsius, uh, which, is, which is this many Fahrenheit. I'll put that below here, because I don't know what those are. And um, yeah, we're going to go and do some knife testing. We're going to make some you know, bushcraft stuff. We're going to do the fixed blade tasks that we'll enjoy using our fixed blades for. So stay with me and let's uh, see how the SGHF 42D does. Uh, this is a sort of area that I like to stop and do my my uh, campy things in. It's got lots of dead trees, so all the trees I'll be using today are dead because people kind of shit themselves sometimes when you cut down a, um, a live tree. Yeah, well, you know, not even cut down, I'm not going to be hewing or felling anything. But yeah, people don't like that, so found some nice dead wood uh, area of trees. Uh, there's a sort of body of water over here, which I'll um, point my GoPro at now. It's um, pretty festy looking stuff, but it's, uh, you know, I can collect it and I might even bring some to a boil and, you know, just as a bit of a knife test thing, make a fire, boil some water, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's nice, it's nice out today. Um, still warrants having a bit extra warmth on, but then we are probably just a bit soft when it comes to the cold because uh, we're sort of very used to the hot here. So. Anyway, let's get cracking on some basic knife testing. I'll saw up some wood for for logs and stuff and we'll, we'll get into it. This is where a knife can actually be actually be fairly handy because the wood starts to get a little bit um, starts to pinch back on itself a little bit so without using it as a um, as like a, a splitting wedge or anything, what you can do is just hit it in the top so you can keep sawing all the way through. Just a little quick strike on the back of that should do it I reckon. Just enough to keep it, keep the cut apart so my saw can slide through effortlessly. parts out later so I look like a cool slick bushcrafter.
and uh, not without some exertion, I've got a piece of wood that shall make a fine uh, knife testing vessel. So a bit of a status report on the knife after all that uh, battening. Um, blade surface, it's still wearing its um, black pretty well. The edge is still really sharp. Battening doesn't really affect the edge of the knife. Apart from that very first strike against the flat surface of the wood, everything from then on is worn by this part, like the thickest part of the knife. And you know, I guess the cheek's a little bit more in a flat grind, but really, not the edge, everywhere but the edge pretty much. Because it is a split and the wood is already kind of apart before the edge um, hits it from that point onwards. Um, what has happened though, this, the handle scales, I don't know if you can hear that, handle scales have become well loose, so um, I'm not sure if that's a, they just need to be re-tightened, but I was messing around with these Torx bits before I left and they are really tight already, so I think it's probably a case of the plastic has, it has the impacts of moved the plastic around the screw a little bit and probably fleshed it out a little bit, so Probably not going to get better, but you know, that's not the end of the world. And there are lots of sort of aftermarket scales you can get for these. Because the scales from really my outset were the one thing I wasn't particularly happy with with the knife. Because it's slick, it's comfortable, but they're very, very slick for a um, for an outdoor knife. I prefer sort of my polypropylene or my, you know, Thermo Run or those sorts of materials. And to be honest, I'm a person who prefers a enclosed full tang. So even if the tang has to be a little narrower, I prefer it enclosed, it's just a little bit more comfortable. In terms of how it was uh, operating while I was battening with it, not too bad. Um, it feels okay, but you can, especially as the handles came free, you start to get little pinch areas here between your hand and the, um, and the steel tang and the scale. So just, it's not the best. It isn't the best knife I felt, and I do prefer my other, I prefer, say, my Gerber strong arm uh, for splitting comfort um, while I'm using it. Uh, overall though, the edge hasn't rolled, it's strong, it's, you know, the steel hasn't bent. It's put up with, that's really, really nasty hardwood and probably some of the nastiest stuff I would suggest, not to blame my own horn, own horn, but I don't think many woods get much harder than Australian redwood and the things that you see guys reviewing knives using. Um, often either North American and they're using like their, their pine, which, geez, I would kill for pine. I'd love if we had pine forests that occurred naturally in my area, but we don't. So redwood is what you get, and it is um, it is redwood redwood ready. It is capable. The steel in this anyway. Handle, a little bit too hard. Um, the impacts just you know just made them a little bit loose. And I've done the same test with other knives, and that hasn't happened. So probably just more uh, affirming my my particular desire for uh, enclosed handle uh, knives. Now uh, let's get to testing some more. Let's see the uh, fine edge cutting capabilities. That ought to be enough wood to get a fire going long enough to boil some water, I reckon. Let's give it a crack. Ah, I got stung on my neck by an inch ant. It Crept up the nape of my neck through my jacket coat and thought I'm gonna have a bite of this tasty looking human male. I'm gonna munch up right on his neck and give him a bit of a sting. And that feels like a cigarette butt being put out on my skin constantly, and it'll probably be like that for about 15 minutes. In chance are not fun things to be bitten by. Probably in the top 500 things to not be bitten by. It's 500 because there are so many things you don't want to be bitten by. Humans probably the number one because that's got an area of creepiness as well but anyway enchant bit me on my neck wish it hadn't but nature is still beautiful and we must protect all the animals all creatures great and small
Alrighty, so that is the SCHF 42D, uh, an Australian review with Australian wood in Australian winter conditions. Um, overall, I think I've made my thoughts on it pretty clear. Um, it's, it's a good knife for the price. It's great materials. Um, it is thick, it is well produced. It is not going to um, fail on you blade wise. Uh, however, a couple of things I must note, the handle is very, very slick. Uh, and it has come loose under sort of moderate to heavy battening, so they will slide around there a little bit. Um, I'll add an addendum at the end of this video as to how they went when I retightened the um, the screws, but um, either way, it's a bit annoying to happen out in the field, and it is why I prefer my enclosed handled knives. So um, I guess another question would be how it compares to the Gerber Strongarm. Uh, let's have a brief talk about that. Oh, a real Sophie's choice here. So the Gerber Strongarm is uh, a very similarly priced and also really high quality knife made of good materials for what they are and uh, it is something that I'd really recommend as well. Um, I think I like the Strongarm a little bit more than I like the 42D. Uh, the Strongarm is probably less adept at say fine slicing. It is a saber grind, um, not as keen perhaps at you know doing really thin cuts. It is more of a tactical survival knife, and it is what it is, it's fine. But they're both 5 inch long blades, sharp steel. Uh, this is 420HC, which isn't the best on pocket knives, but in fixed blade knives is actually really, really good. It's tough and it holds an edge just fine against wood. Um, this is 1095, probably the bushcrafter's choice for certain, but you know. Uh, either way, they'll both do the job really, really well. Uh, some people get really angry when I compare this to this. I mean, people get angry about all sorts of weird things in knife reviews, but um, in essence, they're both kind of a very similar good deal. Uh, there's probably things you wouldn't like about the strong arm. Uh, perhaps the handle might be a little bit not your cup of tea uh, in terms of having the, the double um, guard here. This is much more your classic sort of bushcrafty, outdoory knife. Uh, the Gerber comes with a... Um, Sort of a more military inspired sheath with a couple of different carry options. The uh, Schrade has this good old leather sheath here. Um, very, very simple. Slides in, buttons up, no worries at all. So in terms of which one I would choose, I'd go the strong arm. I just prefer it. Um, a few things about it I prefer. Um, and yeah, I, I just like the enclosed handles. They feel better for me. And that's probably the main thing behind it. I like stainless as well because I do a fair bit of kayaking and uh, I would probably probably go with that one as well uh, for that reason. So yeah, uh, but the Schrade SCHF 42D is a great knife. It's a great buy. I wish they'd um, made it a proper flat edge. There is a, still a slight recurve, at least on my model. But overall, it does the flat spine right. It does the you know nice thick stock right. It's a really good knife that does a lot right. So that'll be this review. Thanks for watching uh, Matt's channel and his video on this knife should be coming across to mine in the very near future, if not already. I'll see you later, guys. Have a nice day, and I hope you don't get bitten by any chance anytime in your near future because it's horrible. I'll see you later.